Angelica Humbert is a glaciologist and head of the working group on ice sheet modeling at the Alfred Wegener Institute uh, in Helmholtz at the Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine Research in Germany. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, put this into con context for us as to what it means for those rising sea levels uh, and what else losing this glacier actually adds to climate change. Yeah, actually what we observe in the past decades is that the Greenland ice sheet is uh, losing a lot of mass and in the in the early 90s and the early 2000s the mass loss was spread rather around the south and now since about 8 to 10 years we are recognizing that more and more of the mass loss is taking place in the northeast and this floating tongue as we call it this is one of the three late last uh, ice shelves remaining in that area. And you see that an iceberg is breaking off there. The calving of an iceberg itself is not really the dramatic situation. But what we recognize is that we are losing quite a lot of mass, not only by breaking away of icebergs like this iceberg here, but in particular, there's a lot of the acceleration going on at the glaciers. And we see a lot of melt at the surface of the Greenland ice sheet. Right, so tell this, us how, how that actually manifests on land. Will this result in, in further rising sea levels at a faster pace that could you know, flood coastal cities on a global scale? Yeah, actually all these changes that we are observing and also what we are metal, modeling for the future is really contributing to the sea level rise until 2100 and beyond that. So we expect that the sea levels are rising in the next decades and until 2100 for Greenland alone about about nine centimeters. That does not sound much, but you have to keep in mind that the mass loss from Greenland is spreading into the southern part of the hemisphere. So you feel it far, far away from the location where it actually happens. And right. in the other way around, we see that ice cover that is vanishing is also increasing the heat in the ocean. So mm. this is a two-way feedback that we observe there. And I mean, what does it mean for Greenland as a country? This ice is Greenland's you know, land mass and it's melting into the sea. How much longer is Greenland actually a country? Well, Greenland itself will have kind of stable coasts and due to this mass loss, this kind of rock is kind of lifting up. It will have dramatic changes for the settlements around Greenland, but it will also have the changes due to this massive amounts of water that are drained off the ice sheet, which you can expect to rise the lake levels around settlements. Oh. And in addition, it is an entirely changing surrounding for people who were hunting, and, and this is a large change for the entire society there. Right. Remind us as well just, you know, how severe the rise in overall temperature is. The global goal uh, was to keep it under 1.5 degrees Celsius, but this region alone has seen a three degree increase since 1980. Yeah, indeed. So uh, in the Arctic in general, we have a polar amplification, and this is what, what it's shown with the three degrees. So even if the global average temperature would be rising only by two degrees over Greenland, you will have to expect a rise to above four degrees. And these glaciers are melting in summer already. So in future, we have to expect that the melting on these glaciers is increasing even more. So it's absolutely important that we are kind of reducing our CO2 emission and that we try to limit the, the temperature increase in the Arctic at, at low levels, because this is very important, has a lot of impact to many, many settlements and to the global um, mean sea level in addition. Okay, Angelica Humbert, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time.